Plymouth Pier was the brainchild of Edward Lancaster, who owned a tailoring and outfitting business in Old Town Street. However, it was Eugenius Birch, an English architect, who designed the pier, among others including Margate Pier and Bournemouth Pier. Plans for the pier date back to 1875, although actual work on the construction of it did not begin until 1883, making it Birch's final pier. The 480-foot pier opened after Birch's death on the 29th of May 1884, having cost £45,000, which is around £4 million today. Facilities included shops, a clock tower and a landing stage. The pier was also the first structure in Plymouth to be lit up by electricity. In 1891, a 2,000-seat pavilion was added. It was used for concert parties, roller skating, band concerts, dancing, boxing and wrestling and was the headquarters to several local organisations. In essence, the pier captured the spirit of the time. Royal Marine and other military bands would gather to play on the pier for people whose family members were serving in the forces. There was a huge sense of community because of this and this continued into the war. However, in later years the pier struggled financially. Steamers stopped calling in 1922 and in 1934 a loss of £1,276 was posted. Receivers were appointed in 1938 to protect the interests of the company's debenture holders. Destruction hit the pier in March 1941. Along with the rest of the city, Plymouth Pier had been hit by a wave of German bombers, completely destroying the once lively public structure. The War Damage Commission, set up to pay for the damage to cities and buildings which had been destroyed during the war, made a payment enabling debenture holders to be bought out. They also agreed to pay the £4,754 demolition in 1953, which saw the end of the Plymouth Pier. In the past few years, after growing interest around the pier, a £750,000 restoration project has started. Plymouth City Council funded this project, which aims to make the Grade 2 listed pier stable and reopen it fully to the public. A statement from Councillor Brian Vincent, Cabinet Member for the Environment, said, our waterfront is extremely important to the city and the local visitor economy. This is a historic pier and we want people to be able to enjoy it again. Initial ground investigation works were carried out in December 2011 to fully assess the condition of the pier. This established what improvement works will be needed to be carried out. The remainder of the project will be split into two remaining phases. Phase 1 will involve the restoration of the west side of the pier and is estimated to take approximately 15 weeks. Phase 2 will involve restoring the east side and will take approximately 20 weeks. To restore the pier, this will involve firstly reconstruction of the walls in sections where stones have become loose. Stones from the seabed will be salvaged and reused where possible. Secondly, stabilisation and reconstruction of the existing steps which have eroded and fallen into the sea. Thirdly, replacement of the existing rubbing strakes which are rotten. These are timber columns on the side of the pier to prevent boats bumping into the stonework. Once the restoration works are complete, the walkway will be resurfaced to improve the overall appearance of the pier. So 70 years after Plymouth Pier was destroyed in the Second World War, plans and funding are now in place to rebuild and improve on the once iconic structure. I'm inside.